Monique Barbeau presents a hearty soup course from Seattle. She calls it saffron fish soup, which includes poached halibut and salmon, finished with roasted red pepper sauce. Bingo Star does the main course in New Orleans. It is confit of duck leg and brined and cold smoked duck breast, served with foie gras and pecan risotto. Finally, Michael LaMonaco offers dessert in New York, an upside-down apple cranberry tart with roasted mission figs in Calvados syrup and lemon vanilla creme fraiche. At this taping, the chef at Fuller's Restaurant in the Seattle Sheraton was Monique Barbeau. The talented Vancouver, British Columbia native was named Best Chef Northwest by the James Beard Society in 1994. She has since retired from chefing to raise a family. Before she left, we taped her saffron fish soup. The soup is started by sweating some onions. for this soup and basically you can take um, some cheesecloth if you don't have cheesecloth you can tie the parsley and, and celery together and just throw it in um, the pot but if you have cheesecloth it helps because it just keeps the flavors all together and they don't get lost in the liquid some parsley some celery tops one crushed bay leaf some peppercorns white or black and I always put a crushed garlic in there. And you just tie that together. So it's ready to go when you add the liquid to the soup. Make sure you get all the corners so nothing falls out. White wine is added to the veg. And then you can add um, your slivered garlic that has been, um, I did it on a mandolin, but as long as you cut it thin, you can add your garlic. You can add some fish stock. Um, I use canned tomatoes because they're a perfect product for this soup. Either um, whole tomatoes that you cut yourself or get the diced um, variety. And you don't want really all that liquid. You just really want um, the actual tomato itself in there. Let that go. Now you want to bring it to a boil. And you can add your saffron now. I always add an, a nice pinch of saffron. And break it up in your fingers before you add it in. You can just let that come to a boil. And you want to, um, don't forget your sachet bag in there. Now, um, for the real, which is just a red pepper um, puree, you want to um, start with um, some red pepper that's been roasted and peeled and all the seeds removed. Now, it needs to be bound with a little bit of um, bread crumbs. So, um, so what I've done is I've just um, taken the crust off bread, and you don't want it that dry, so you just need to wet it with a little bit of water, just enough to absorb the um, to absorb the bread and you just want to sort of break it up in your hands and then you want to squeeze out all the liquid so you're left with a very sort of wet bread crumbs rather than the dry variety. The rui is blended. Uh, um, some salt right away that will help break down a little bit of the components. Some garlic depending on how much you want. This soup has quite a bit of garlic in it. So, a little bit of garlic, some basil, just roughly chopped basil, 
and I'm a little pinch of cayenne. Now you want to start it with a little bit of olive oil so you get the puree going. And I like to start with extra virgin. It adds a nice flavor to this. Now once you've got a puree going, you're going to want to tighten it with the breadcrumb. The fish used with the soup is salmon and halibut. You want to start with a little garlic. And a little bit of white wine. You don't really sauteing the, the fish, you're just almost poaching it in a little white wine, garlic. And a touch of butter is always a nice little addition, a little bit of butter. It's a very light broth liquid, so the extra elements that go into the soup can be a little richer. And for the fish, you're just gonna add a little bit of halibut and salmon. And you're just gonna lightly poach it, season it with a little salt and pepper. Add the lightly poached fish. Cooking the fish separately allows it to stay nice and moist. If you threw, if you add it to the soup, it would probably overcook. So the extra step is is well worth it because the, the broth is very light in flavor. So this is going to add a nice flavor to the to the broth. The rui. And then you can just garnish it with a, you know a couple croutons, and they will be moistened up with the liquid. And then um, some um, fresh fresh chopped herbs. The chef and menu architect at Cuvée Restaurant in New Orleans is Bingo Starr. Incidentally, Cuvée describes a certain blend of wine, usually associated with the Champagne region of France. The restaurant opened in 2000 and under Bingo has made its mark. Here is duck done two ways with foie gras. The chef removes the breast and leg quarters of the duck. All I'm doing is following along the bones. Let the knife do the work. Okay. The skin side of the breast is scored, which will get rid of some of the fat. Just scoring the fat, not really cutting into the meat at all. All right. With the legs, we take those, we salt cure them overnight with uh, some herbs, some peppercorns, some bay leaves. We let them salt overnight. We wash the salt off, then we submerge them in uh, liquid duck fat. Those braised down stew on itself for about two or three hours at about 275 until the meat is kind of pulling away at the end of the drumstick. That way you know the confit is ready. That can either be stored in the fat or you can pull it out, lay it out in the pan, let them cool. What we're doing is we're adding a little Creole seasoning into a bowl. Okay, kosher salt. This is a brine for the breasts. Brown sugar. You're trying to you know, accomplish the saltiness, the sweetness, meanwhile, curing the breast also. And a little uh, Louisiana Scenes sugar cane syrup. Okay. Once you have all that in here, whoop, once you have all that in here, you're gonna add just enough water to where the salt and sugar will dissolve. Whisk that around. It'll seem like a lot of seasoning and everything on this, but you're really just trying to impart a flavor pretty quickly on this duck breast. Once everything's dissolved, we'll just lay our duck breast in here. 
they will soak in the cooler for about four hours. Once they've cured for four hours, you take, you wash them off. Then we put them into a smoker and do a, a cold smoke on them, just smoking without the element of heat to impart also a smoky flavor. So you're working salt, sweet, and smoke. Okay, after you've cured, washed, cold smoked the duck breast, this is what you end up with. You can see the slightly discoloration that's also from the cure and the smoke. Here we have a duck leg that has been cold feed, cooled, dried, then we took the little thigh bone out for presentation wise. What you're trying to do is get the fat nice and crispy. Uh, no salt and pepper on this, this already has all the cure on it. About a medium to low heat. And you're just gonna kinda let that go. Comfy leg can also go in there. A little olive oil. Non-stick pan is great for this, so your fat doesn't tear on the duck leg. Kind of get that going. Caramelized pecans start the risotto. All right. A little our fresh herbs. Going. Then we'll hit, right here we have some par-cooked risotto. Risotto that's been right, almost brought to the point of fully cooked, but not all the way. You want to allow a little time for the reheat. That's in there. About a tablespoon of uh, rope for cheese. Parmesan. All right. Then we just have a little non-reduced uh, mixture of duck and wild mushroom stock. And you're just going to cook it down with that. A little black pepper. And a little salt. And we'll hit a touch more of the herbs in there to finish it off. Once it starts to tighten up on you like that, a little whole butter. And we'll just kind of stir that, put a little creaminess into it. Perhaps gilding the lily, the third item of foie gras is started. We're going to start our foie gras, which is going to garnish the dish. We have about a two ounce piece. We'll do salt, fresh clacked black pepper, again both sides, hot pan. We'll go right in. Let it get one nice good color. Let it go. Good. On one side. And you just want to cook it to uh, about a medium rare. You want it to be warm all the way through so it's not cold in the middle. So you have the breast slice. Then we'll start the plate. In the middle. We're going to mound a little of this uh, candy pecan rope for risotto. Right in the center of the plate. Alrighty. We have the duck, comfy leg, nice and crispy. We'll lean that right up on top. Take our foie gras. That. Just kind of lay a little bit over the foie gras and the rest just over the duck meat.
Michael LaMonaco first attracted national attention as executive chef at the 21 Club in New York. In this epic of celebrity-driven chefs, he has no problem adjusting. He was trained as an actor and, in fact, toured with Hare and Jesus Christ Superstar. He shows his teaching skills with this apple cranberry tart. Using uh, Granny Smith apples, peel, cord, just slice a quarter of an inch thick. A warm mixture of butter and brown sugar go into the bottom of these non-stick tart pans. And top each one in, with an apple slice right into the sugar. The batter is started by creaming butter and sugar using the paddle attachment of the mixer. All-purpose flour, baking powder, and a pinch of salt are sifted. Dried cranberries will go into the batter. Meanwhile, I'll prepare my dried cranberries. Just dried cranberries. And by prepare them, all I'm going to do is dust a little flour on them. What that does, keeps the cranberries suspended in the cake batter as this cooks, so they don't sink to the bottom. Some people use a little cornstarch for that. It does the same thing. Two eggs are added to the batter, one at a time. That's looking good. And there's our second egg. Great. Now we'll just slow that down. I'm going to put in my cake flour, my all-purpose flour, sifted with my baking soda, baking powder. Start that up on slow. Put in the rest of my flour. Buttermilk and vanilla extract are added. You can mix the buttermilk and the vanilla extract together if you like. Let's give that a nice, now we have a nice smooth batter. And as the last stage, we'll add those, cran those dried cranberries that have been tossed with a little bit of flour. Now we're ready to fill our tart molds. to fill them thoroughly and then flatten them off the top using an offset spatula. Bake at 350 for 20 to 22 minutes. For our apple cranberry tart, now we'll make the Calvados roasted figs. I have some beautiful fresh mission figs. Okay, so here, this is our dark brown sugar syrup. We'll let that cool for a second. It's very hot. That's a sugar syrup and it's been reduced. What we'll do is add a couple of tablespoons away from the fire, a couple of tablespoons of Calvados or apple brandy. And we can set that aside while we take a look at our figs. Our beautiful mission figs, just cut in half, washed cut in half or in quarters. The fig sections are warmed in butter. We'll add some syrup, some of our brown sugar Calvados syrup to that.
The figs are warmed through, then taken off heat. Another garnish is creme fraiche flavored with the pulp of a vanilla bean and lemon zest. To this, we'll add the zest of one lemon. Now we'll actually whip that again. Now I want to make it stiff. It's a non-stick pan, so that should work. There we go. 